Righto, tell you there champs, and Apple just had their keynote and it was scary. The PC industry are scared. Oh, imagine walking through Apple Park with a rainbow illuminated, the only place in the world where you can see a rainbow at night. Quiet, it's eerie. Mist is everywhere. And then you hear something from behind you and Tim Bone comes and taps you on the shoulder and gives you the old Jolly Roger and says, I ain't called Tim Bone for nothing. Oh, that's some scary shit right there. So anyway, let's talk about these new Macs, M3. Now, make sure you guys do subscribe. I'll get these in. I'll test them. I'll push them to the max. Don't worry about that. These will be the best laptops you can buy. Or will they? They certainly won't be the fastest, but I think they got claims for the best. So basically, what did Apple announce? New M3 MacBook Pros, okay? MacBook Pro 14 and 16 with M3, M3 Pro and M3 Max. These M3 chips are based on 3 nanometer technology and Apple are claiming 30, 40, 50, two times as fast. Well, don't believe them. They are faster, no doubt. But do you remember all the Apple pundits? When Intel were making chips for Macs, they were saying, oh, all Intel do is they add more power and they add more cores. They don't make faster chips, they just throw cores and power at it. I hope they're watching this and they say the same thing because that's basically what's happening. Yes, of course, core for core, CPU or GPU, the M3 processors are faster, right? They should be. But in reality, basically they're throwing cores at it. So all these 30, 40, 50, two times as fast, all this sort of stuff, you've got to look at cores, right? How many cores did the M1 have compared to how many cores you have now? That's where most of the gains are being made. And it's actually really interesting. You can actually see that. The new MacBook Pro 16 has a 140 watt charger. It used to have a 130 watt charger. What does this tell you? They're just pumping more watts into it, using more power, adding more cores as well. Basically doing what Intel were doing, except at least they're going from 7 to 5 to 3 nanometer, right? So not exactly the same as what Intel was doing, but, you know, these M3s aren't, you know, night and day difference compared to the last, you know, M1s or M2s, except for the core count and the extra power, right? Core for core, IPC, there's not that much to get excited about. I also had a look, not Wi-Fi 7 either, Wi-Fi 6E, so that's good. They're Wi-Fi 6E at least, but Wi-Fi 7 is sort of out now, so maybe next year. But basically, other than that, they're pretty much the same, right? Just with new chips. And it was actually really crazy that they were comparing it to a base model Intel and saying it's 11 times faster than the base model Intel we had. Seriously, Apple, come on. It is interesting that they're trying to pitch this at the people that are using those Intel Macs. So they're really trying to move people off those Intel Macs as quick as they can. But again, 11 times faster than the base model Mac. Come on, what was that, an i5? I don't even know. Can't remember. Anyway, these will be the best laptops you're going to get. And when I say best, I just mean as an overall package, all-round sort of laptop. Because I've made a video where I said, this laptop ruined me. And I talked about my MacBook Pro 14. I have the M1 version and it did ruin me because I was looking at other laptops and I'm thinking nothing compares. Now I'm not saying they're the fastest, they're not. You'll see that Apple have stopped comparing their GPU to Nvidia because they'll get crushed by an Nvidia GPU, right? New architecture aside and basically there's some sort of hardware level stuff to do with the new GPU. It's sort of like, without getting sort of too esoteric, it's sort of like hyper-threading for the GPU at a hardware level where they can, you know, execute more things in the GPU than they traditionally did with, you know, software. I don't think this GPU is going to bear its full fruit until, you know, a few generations down the track. It is certainly no RTX 4090 killer. They don't even mention NVIDIA anymore because basically you're going to get crushed by NVIDIA. But you've got to remember those RTX 4090s use 175 watts alone just for the GPU. And then you've got 100 and whatever watts for the CPU on Intel, right? Although with a Mac GPU, right, you can have 128 gigabytes of RAM dedicated to the GPU, which NVIDIA can't do that. Those laptops may be more powerful than these Macs just on raw power, outside of hardware acceleration, of course, because the Mac can make up quite a lot there. And also, you've got to remember that the PCs have this hardware acceleration as well. So outside of that, yes, the PC is still more powerful. CPU, GPU, they use a hell of a lot more power. But the thing is, when you unplug them, they're virtually useless. The Mac would kill them unplugged. And that's why I say these Macs are the best laptops. Unless you game or you're into sort of 3D stuff, 
these Macs are the best. And as I said in that video, this laptop ruined me. The reason I say they're the best is because the best display, the best keyboard, the best trackpad, the best speakers, the best performance per watt, the best battery life, you know, best, best, best. And if it isn't the best in those categories, it's certainly second best, or at least one of the best. And unplugged, without question, it is the best. It's interesting, 140 watt package now with the MacBook Pro 16, you won't be able to use the you know full performance power mode unless you're plugged in with this MacBook Pro 16. But basically, you get full power on these Macs unplugged. It's a good upgrade, just don't believe the 30, 40, 50% faster. Look into how many cores it has compared to the last one, but it really doesn't matter. It's faster, right? Will I upgrade from the M1? No, it's still not fast enough. This MacBook Pro 14 is so good that, you know, I don't need to upgrade it unless I go to 12K footage or something like that. I don't need to upgrade it. Yes, the renders will be faster with the new one, but render and speed, whatever. It's, now it takes me two minutes instead of four minutes. Like, who cares? I don't care about that. As long as I can get the performance in the timeline, which I do with this MacBook Pro 14, I really probably won't upgrade until M4, M5 when they, you know, literally double the performance, which it isn't at the moment. So anyway, what did you guys think of this announcement stay tuned for my content coming up with these new macbook pros with m3 m3 pro and m3 max and yeah catch you next one telly ho space black looks absolutely amazing macbook pro is also built to last the enclosure is created from a custom alloy that uses 100 percent recycled aluminum with the power of the m3 family of chips up to 22 hours of battery life a stunning liquid retina XDR display and advanced connectivity. The 14 inch MacBook Pro delivers more performance and capabilities than ever. And while it previously started at $19.99, it now starts at just $15.99. And the 16 inch MacBook Pro with the monumental performance of M3 Pro and M3 Max still starts at $24.99. You can order the new MacBook Pro today and models with M3 and M3 Pro will be available next week. Models with M3 Max will be available later in November. We're updating the 24-inch iMac for the first time by giving it the M3 chip. M3 iMac is up to two times faster than iMac with M1. For those who are upgrading from an Intel-based iMac, you'll experience a huge difference in performance and features. Compared to the most popular 27-inch models, iMac with M3 is up to two and a half times faster. And when compared to the most powerful 21 and a half inch iMac model, it's up to a remarkable four times faster. And you'll love seeing everything come to life on the beautiful, large and immersive 24 inch 4.5K retina display. Whichever model you're coming from, you'll appreciate the enormous amount of screen real estate on the new iMac display.